What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video I'm going to talk about sets, which is a really important concept to understand in math and it's actually something we learn about really early, like all the way back in middle school algebra. We learn a little bit about sets and it's actually used all the way from then all the way up into more advanced maths that we learn about in graduate school, maths that I don't even know about yet, right? It's used. So very common to see this concept come up. We're constantly dealing with sets and that's why I thought it would be really important to make this video where it's just an introduction. I'm going to go down to the basics and talk about what is a set? What notation do we use when we're dealing with sets? How can we describe a set? What is a subset? All those questions will hopefully be answered by the end of this video. So hope you enjoy and get something out of it. So let's start with what is a set? A set is a collection of distinct objects. Right? Pretty straightforward. And this may sound a little abstract. Like what do you mean by objects? I thought this was math. We're dealing with numbers. That is true. Usually when we deal with sets, we are dealing with real numbers, but they, they are not restricted to real numbers. We can have a set be a set of animals. We can have a set be, you know, pig, cow, moose. That can be a set, right? Three distinct objects, okay? So it doesn't have to be real numbers. It can be a little bit more abstract, but usually we are dealing with real numbers. So instead of pig, cow, moose, we'd have something like this, two, three, four. This would be a set of three real numbers, three distinct objects. So the objects in a set we usually refer to these objects as elements or members. I tend to use the word elements, but both are used. Use whichever one you want. I usually say elements. So looking at this set, I would say, oh, two is an element of the set S. Three is an element of the set S. Four is an element of the set S. One, one is not an element of the set S. Those are the kind of things you could say about this set. And that brings us to this notation. This notation we can sort of read out loud as A is an element of the set S, or A is a member of the set S, A belongs to the set S. Sometimes you'll hear that third one. But A is an element of the set S. To say A is not an element of the set S, we just draw a line through that notation, right? And to use this notation, by the way, let me go to this example so I can show you how we kind of write it. It's not an epsilon, by the way. It's not, I know it kind of looks like epsilon. It's not an epsilon. Again, we could talk about this set and say, okay, well, two is an element. So I draw like a C like this, and then just draw a line like that. Two is an element of this set S, okay? One is not an element of this set S. So that's how I use this notation. That's how I write it at least. But yeah, A is an element of the set S. A is not an element of the set S. That's the notation we use to show that. So there are a couple of different ways we can define a set. We can use what's called roster notation, or we can use what's called set builder notation. Which notation you use is really up to you. First of all, make sure you're paying attention to what you're being asked to do, right? Talk to your instructor. But really, it's up to you. I will say, though, there are a lot of cases where one is easier or more convenient to use than the other, and that goes for both of them, all right? Um, and also, you will have to know how to read, interpret, and understand both of these notations, especially if you plan on continuing your journey into mathematics and taking more classes. You will have to know how to interpret these as they come up. So that's why I'm talking about them both, okay? So, roster notation. We literally just list the elements, all right? Put all the elements down, put commas in between them, slap some curly brackets on the ends, bam, that's it. That's roster notation. So this set contains the elements 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8, and we have to find this set using roster notation. Pretty straightforward. Now we have set builder notation. With set builder notation, we characterize the elements in a set by stating the property they must have. So in order for an element to be in this set, it must have a certain property or certain properties. So we just state that property or those properties, okay? In this case, the properties are what? Well, single digit number, right? These are all single digit and they're all even. So we can say X such that, this is a such that symbol, X such that X is a single digit even number. So we have defined this exact same set using what's called set builder notation by stating the property that elements, right? Stating a property that the objects must have in order to be elements of this set. Hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, these two sets have the same elements. They are the exact same set. They are just defined using two different notations. In general, first of all, make sure you're looking at what you're being asked to do, right? And, you know, use whichever you understand better, whichever one you prefer. I tend to only use roster notation with really short, finite sets like this or smaller. You know, in general, I lean towards set builder notation, but that's just me, okay? But hopefully this makes sense. 
So maybe there's some of y'all who are like, wait a minute, you said this idea of sets comes up all the time. You said we learned about it in middle school. None of this stuff looks familiar. I've never seen this stuff before. Well, let me stop and say, I promise you, you have. You have dealt with sets. Maybe you just haven't recognized it. You haven't known it. You haven't made that connection. So let me point out some really common sets. The most common of them all, the real numbers, the set of real numbers. This is a set. You've dealt with real numbers before, right? That's a set. Rational numbers, integers, these are all sets, and we deal with these even at the most basic level of math, okay? What else? Intervals. Every interval is a set, right? This is an open interval. This is a closed interval. These are both sets, and to make it even more convincing, I can rewrite this. How can I rewrite this? In set builder notation, x such that what? x has to be bigger than negative 1, but less than 1. So negative 1 less than x less than 1, close that curly bracket, bam. And let me make sure I'm clear that that's a such that. x such that negative 1 is less than x is less than 1. So we can rewrite this interval in set builder notation. This is a set, all right? What else is a set? What else have we dealt with really early in algebra? It has to do with functions. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with functions. And this, it may come to you looking at this kind of, you know, interval stuff. But I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it. Domain and range, right? Finding the domain of a function, finding the range of the function. These are both sets, okay? So we have dealt with this stuff. Maybe we just haven't recognized it. We haven't made that connection yet. But these are all sets we're dealing with, which is pretty cool, right? Are you excited for the rest of this video? All right, guys, so let's finish off this video talking a little bit about subsets, and the rest will have to spill into some future videos. I'll talk even more about subsets, talk about equality of sets, cardinality, set operations, all that stuff is coming. Make sure to stay tuned, hit subscribe, all that stuff. You know what to do. So subsets, what is a subset? Well, conceptually, I think of a subset as a set within a set, right? That's how I think of it conceptually. But here's the formal definition. A is a subset of B. That's this notation. That's why I would read something like this out loud. A is a subset of B. If and only if. This is not a typo. The two Fs mean if and only if, all right? So A is a subset of B, if and only if. Every element of A is also an element of B. So this if and only if means that this is a double implication. So if we know that A is a subset of B, then we can conclude that every element of A is also an element of B. And if we know that every element of A is also an element of B, then we can conclude that A is a subset of B. The implication goes both ways. That's what this if and only if means. So based on this definition, we're going to answer some true or false questions. This is a really good example, I think. Hopefully it'll help us build some intuition around subsets. But first, before we continue, before I forget, how would I write that A is not a subset of B? You could probably guess it. It's pretty predictable. A is not a subset of B. We just draw a little line through that symbol, right? A is not a subset of B. So yeah, A is a subset of B. A is not a subset of B. Train your mind to read this out loud as that, okay? So here's our example. We're given three sets. And again, these letters are arbitrary. We're gonna be mixing stuff around, so don't get confused. Pause the video if you need to here and think about it for a second. We're gonna answer these as true or false. So is B a subset of A? So how we're going to answer this question is we're going to determine, is every element in B also an element of A? Well, let's look. B has the elements 1 and 3. A also has the elements 1 and 3. Yes, this is true. B is a subset of A. What about is A a subset of C? Is every element of the set A, 1, 2, 3, are all these elements also elements of C? One, two, three. Yes, they are. This is true. A is a subset of C. Okay? What about this third example? Is this true or false? Is B a subset of C? Well, let's see. B has the elements 1 and 3. Are both of those elements of C? Yes, they are. All right? True. And from this, what can we take from this? What can we notice? We have B is a subset of A. A is a subset of C. Therefore, B is a subset of C. I think this is something we can maybe prove true in all cases. And in fact, let's go ahead and write this out here. B is a subset of A, and A is a subset of C. So intuitively, this actually makes sense. Every element in B is also an element of A, and every element of A is an element of C. Therefore, every element of B has to be an element of C. Right? So this is actually like sort of a little proof we could do. If this and this, then B is a subset of C. 
okay? So this is pretty easy to do, but maybe I'll do it actually. I'll finish the video off with that. All right, is A a subset of A? Is every element in A also an element in A? Yes, of course. And in general, I think we could even write that this is true in general. Every set is a subset of itself, right? Clearly, because if a set, right, if an element is an A, then it must also be, it's pretty clear to see that this is in general true. So I'll just write that there. So hopefully this helps you gain a little intuition, a little understanding about subsets. Let's finish this, let's prove this actually. I'll show you how you can do a fun proof uh, using these subsets. And there are a lot of more fun proofs. That's may, one of the big reasons I wanted to get this video out there is because I wanna do a lot of fun proofs with set theory and using sets and that kind of stuff. And first I wanted to make sure people know what a set is and what a subset is and that kind of stuff. So let's prove this and then end the video. So for those of you who have a little bit of experience with proofs and set theory, this is gonna be insanely easy. But for those of you who are still learning and who want to learn how to prove things and want to learn how to do proofs that involve sets, this is perfect because we're still using arbitrary sets. We still use a lot of the ideas and concepts that we use in these harder proofs, right? But it's very basic, it's introductory level. Um, it's pretty comfortable, you can get through and, and build your confidence up a little so that you can go and crush those harder proofs later. You know what I mean? So we have A, B, and C. These are just arbitrary sets. Suppose that A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C. We're gonna prove that A is a subset of C. So remember, this is an implication. This is a conditional statement. If this, then this. So that's why we're assuming that this first part is true and showing that assuming that leads to this being true. That's how we do these direct proofs, right? I have a video on it, by the way. Maybe I'll put a link up there. That's how we're gonna do this proof. So how are we gonna prove that A is a subset of C? Well, we have to show that every element of A is also an element of C, but we don't know what the elements of A are, right? That's why we're just gonna let some arbitrary element, right? Some arbitrary thing be an element of A. So we're gonna say let X be an element of A. And then we're gonna use some definitions, really. That's all this proof has in it, is definitions. Since X is an element of A, and A is a subset of B, then X is an element of B. So I'm gonna write since, uh, let's see, A is a subset of B, X is also an element of B, okay? And I can probably just do this one more time. Since B is a subset of C, X is an element of C, pretty straightforward. So since A is subset of B, and since B is a subset of C, X is an element of C. And you can maybe rephrase this, therefore, if X is an element of A, X is an element of C, and therefore, you know, hence result that A is a subset of C. You can do the last touches and finessing and that sort of thing, but hopefully that makes sense. Again, only a few lines, but this is the basic idea. We're gonna be working with this idea a lot when we get into proofs with sets, where we're just letting arbitrary elements be uh, you know, elements of different arbitrary sets and showing that they end up being elements of other sets. And in general, that's how you show that a set is a subset of another set, is let some arbitrary element, right? Let some arbitrary number or thing be an element of that first set and show that that also is an element of that other set. Then you can say that they are subsets. So in general, it's a very useful technique. It's used a lot in like proofs courses, analysis, all that stuff, important to understand. And if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching, thank you so much. Hit subscribe, maybe like the video, share it, do all that stuff, who knows. But most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles. See y'all later.